Welcome to our City Center Church YouTube page. Here you'll find the latest content and our live streaming. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, hit that like button, and hit that bell icon so you'll be notified the next time we go live. It's a small story in Acts, and we're going to talk about it here today, if that's okay with you all. Even if it wasn't, amen, we were going to talk about it anyways. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hey, if you have a Bible, will you open it up to the book of Acts today? And you can open up your phone if you have a Bible app, that's okay. And if not, we will have it on the screen. We're going to be Acts chapter 20, and we're going to be beginning at the seventh verse. The Bible says, on the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Paul spoke to the people, and because he intended to leave the next day, he kept on talking until midnight. There were many lamps in the upstairs room where we were meeting, and Verse 9, seated in a window was a young man whose name was Eutychus. Look at your neighbor, say Eutychus. Eutychus was sinking into a deep sleep. As Paul talked on and on, amen, and on. But the Bible says, when he was sound asleep, He fell to the ground from the third story and was picked up dead. Paul, in the midst of his sermon, left the pulpit and went down, threw himself on the young man, put his arms around him, embraced him. Don't be alarmed, he said. The boy is alive. Then he went upstairs And broke bread again, and he ate. And after taking, talking, excuse me, until daylight, Lord have mercy, Paul left, and the people took the young man, Eutychus, home alive and were greatly comforted. Will you all pray with me? Father, this is your word, and these are your people. Holy Spirit, Will you preach this message with me outwardly into the hearts of those like you preached it inwardly to me? May something be said or done today that's going to change the trajectory of someone's life. And I thank you for your presence that's here today. We bless you in Jesus' name. Come on, everybody said amen. Amen. Come on, say amen again. Hey, if you're taking notes today, and my 180 students will tell you we, we take notes in 180, amen. Hey, let's go. If you're taking notes today, I'd like to talk to you all from the topic of while you were sleeping. While you were sleeping. Have you ever fallen asleep in a place you shouldn't have? Come on, it's classic to fall asleep in class. How many of you have ever fallen asleep in class? Come on, I'm not all by myself. The worst is when someone catches you, though. You make direct eye contact with the person. Uh, uh, Have you ever had that slouch and you're you're sitting on your table and your arm like slips out and you catch yourself? Oh, it's absolutely the worst. Have you ever fallen asleep while driving? Yeah, we won't do a show of hands on that one, but all the honest people in the room, you all know what that feels like, y'all. It is completely scary. When you know the song that you were on, it was playing, but then you kind of come to and then you on another song and you're like, (laughs) how how long have I been out? You start to do everything you can do not to fall asleep while driving. You turn your music all up extra loud, but it's not your normal music. Oh, no, no. Not Maverick City, not Elevation Music. You're not listening to City Center Worship. You are fist bumping to NSYNC or Backstreet Boys. Come on, you singing bye, bye, bye. (laughs) You do everything you can do. To not fall asleep. So you roll down your windows, you let some fresh air in, whether it's hot or cold, and you begin to stick your head out the window and yell into the wind and be like, ah! Have you ever fallen asleep in church? Uh Uh-oh. Everybody just keep looking forward. 
You know when the temperature is just right in the house? Not too hot, not too cold, but just right. Maybe you had a nice breakfast, your, your belly is full, the lighting, ooh, the lighting is nice and dim. That cushioned chair, praise the Lord, is wrapping your blessed assurance awfully nice, and you, you doze off. In our biblical story, Paul, who sensed that he needed to preach for a long time because he was ready to depart the next day, and he knew he might not get to see this group of people, these Christians again, so he preached for hours. In fact, we're told that midnight had arrived already, and Paul showed no signs, not one, of stopping. He showed no signs of intermission, and there was no potty break being offered. You know, these church workers and volunteers in the kids' ministry were mad. Come get your kid. In our biblical text today, Eutychus fought a losing battle against falling asleep. Our author today is Luke, and he writes and tells us that there were many lamps in the room. Can you imagine the flickering, uh, the candlelight? There's so many lights that were illuminating the room. It was probably warm in the room. On top of that, they had just eaten a meal, plus the late hour, perhaps a long work day for Eutychus. And Paul's long message, the young man was unable to hold out, and he falls asleep. I was born and raised in a Baptist church, y'all. Baptist church. My my parents are here, so I'm going to do my best not to look them in the eye, y'all. We did all-day church. Sunday school in the morning, service immediately following. Then we would go to one of three places for lunch. Either we went to first, (laughs) Old Country Buffet, or we went to Ryan's. Students, I'll fill you all in on that next week. They don't know nothing about that. And then after eating, we would go back to second service for the second service of the evening, and we would stay late. I know something about all-day church. So I can't fault Eutychus for falling asleep during an all-nighter at church. But we know from Scripture that Eutychus, he was young. And many people, as I studied this, I saw so many scholars that were telling us that it was because he was young which is why he was so susceptible to this. But I would submit to you that I'm not mad at Eutychus for catching some Z's. There's nothing wrong with sleep, City Center Church. Many of y'all could use some extra hours. You cranky. (laughs) And you got an extra hour of sleep today. Praise the Lord. All the parents with little ones like, we didn't get no extra hour of sleep. That's what time our babies waked up, amen? But it wasn't... I don't believe that it was sleep that was the problem in this story. It is what happened while he was asleep. He fell. It wasn't sleep that took him out. It was the fall. So let me paint this picture for you. His fall preceded his death. His sleep preceded his fall. But his sleepiness, his tiredness, his exhaustion preceded all of that. And everyone in this room knows, just like Eutychus, what it is like to be battling when drowsiness sets in and you begin to doze off. So today, I want to talk about sleepiness, but not the physical kind of sleepiness. I want to talk about spiritual sleepiness. Can we talk about it? You may be spiritually sleepy when you have put the things of the world in front of the things of the kingdom of God. You may be spiritually sleepy when you are okay waiting for hours to get into a Taylor Swift concert, but you don't have the patience to wait on God. You may be spiritually sleepy when you are motivated by the crowd screaming, let's go, Brandon. In fact, that amps you up, but when Jesus says, it is finished, you are unmoved and less encouraged. You may be spiritually sleepy when you are more moved by the person seated in the White House than the one seated at the right hand of the Father. You may be spiritually sleepy when you are more interested in in attending a political rally than a spiritual revival. 
You may be spiritually sleepy when you think somehow that you are spiritual because you watched The Chosen. <laughs> but you haven't read a single scripture this week, this month, and let's just be honest, this year. You may be spiritually sleepy when you think that you're a Christian because you serve on the greeting team in City Kids. Don't get me wrong, we want to thank you for what you do, but now you have made your place in the kingdom predicated on what you do. Last I checked, it had everything to do with what Jesus has already done. Can I keep going? You may be spiritually sleepy if you find every reason not to join a small group. You have made every excuse why you won't go to one and start one, but the idea of going to a Super Bowl party gives you amplified glory. You may be in a spiritual sleepiness if you can think of all the things and recall all the things that man lied about, every promise that man has ever broken, but you can't cite or recite a single promise that's been spoken over you by God. You may be spiritually sleepy if the only boundaries you're placing in dating are the ones that you created. Even though God has already put the boundaries in place and there is no wiggle room for your own approach. And you may be spiritually sleepy if Sunday is your day to sleep in, which is why you can't make it to church, but you were bright-eyed, bushy-tailed this morning when the Chiefs were playing at 8.30 a.m. We're talking about spiritual sleepiness today. City Center Church, are, are you spiritually sleepy today? Are you putting the things of the world in front of the things of God? Eutychus, he got sleepy. But again, I, I don't fault Eutychus for catching some Z's. Uh, I want to take this one step further. This is what we really are going to talk about here today. My concern for this young man in this story was that he chose to sit in an open window. He could have leaned up against the doorway. He maybe could have sat on the floor. He could have been like Forrest Gump and Bubba and found someone to put his back up against. But he chooses to sit in a window. And let's just pretend today that an open window represents an open access to sin in your life. I'm talking about you. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking about you. Let's make, let's, let's make an open window the illustration that reflects how close it is to just reach out and just touch sin. Many of us in this room, we know where the line is drawn with sin, but we feel we have the strength to control it, so we create our own boundaries and disregard God's. For many of us, we know where the line is drawn for sin, but we like to go right up to the line and flirt with it. You know that married person who has that one single friend who's a coworker and they're just friends? You know, they laugh and they talk and they joke and, hey, hey, they call themselves each other's work spouse? Shame the devil. We're going to address this here today. If you're in this place today and you are married and you have a coworker or a friend and you call them your work spouse but they're not really your spouse, I'm here to serve you notice that you need to shut that down. In fact, you need to serve them an official separation papers, and guess what? The divorce proceedings from your work spouse are in order. Some people would be like, oh, J.D., come on, calm down. It's innocent. Yeah, it's innocent until it's not. Until you begin to get a little fatigued and drowsy in your own marriage. Until you begin to sink into a deep sleep in your own marriage. Next thing you know, you're waking up from your sleep, but it's not your spouse who's laying next to you. I'm reminded of the story of David today. Let me show you a scripture, 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 2. Late one afternoon, after his midday rest, David got out of the bed and was walking on the roof, a very high place of the palace. And the Bible says, as he looked over the city, he noticed that there was a woman of unusual beauty taking a bath. I want you guys to see this, that he was walking out on the roof. He was looking out, and some of you have been sitting in the window in your marriage looking out. In the window, you can look to your left and see everything in your home, and you can look to the right, and you can see everything that is in the world. From the third floor balcony, everyone's grass looks a little bit of greener 
is higher up. I don't fault Eutychus for catching Z's. There's nothing wrong with sleep. And I don't believe that it was sleep that was the problem. It happened when he was asleep. He fell. Are you guys staying with me? Scripture tells us that he was, everybody was gathered in the upstairs on the third floor. I want you guys to see this for a moment. If Eutychus had fallen from the first floor, he probably would have suffered bumps and bruises. If he had fallen from the second floor, maybe broken bones. But Eutychus, he flew, he, he fell from the third floor and ain't no coming back from that fall. But my question to everyone in here is, what fall is impending in your life right now? One from which you won't be able to come back from, not if, but when you fall. Some of y'all would say, I'm not married, so this message ain't for me. I'm just going to check out. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm an equal opportunity offender, and I'm coming to a church seat near you. (laughs) Strap in to all my single people, to all my young people, to all the young adults, and to everybody in the room, even watching online. I want to ask you a series of questions. What is the open window that you are seated in right now? Maybe it's pornography. You say, well, I'm not hurting anybody by looking at the images in the magazine and watching the video. That's what many men and women will try to do to convince themselves that what they are doing is not bad. But can I share with you something about the gospel? You see, the gospel of Jesus Christ teaches us that pornography is immoral. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ counseled us to keep our minds, our thoughts, and our hearts pure. And using pornography, it it invokes lustful feelings and leads us away from purity. Pornography creates a fantasy that cannot be fulfilled because your current spouse or your future spouse can never live up to whatever it is that you have dreamt up in your mind. Next thing you know, you fall out of the window because you are thinking not about your spouse when you're in bed. You are imagining the fantasy. You get comfortable. You get complacent. And you fall. And there are some falls, y'all, that you cannot come back from. City Center Church, what is the open window that you are seated in right now? Maybe it's drugs and alcohol. When you're in the privacy of your own home and when, when you're out with your friends, you want your mind to be altered. You want to be high as a kite and you want to live free. You start to adapt things in the world like YOLO. You only live once. Except for you, Christian, you're going to live twice. Once here on the earth, hey, and once again in your eternally heavenly body. If you believe it, say amen. Amen. What is the open window that you are seated in right now? Are you a swindler or a scammer? Oh. Are you conning people out of things to make an extra buck? Are you a thief? Do you steal? Does greed control your life? Are you prideful? What is the open window that you are seated in right now? Is it robbing God with your money? Uh Uh-oh. And and, and instead of having 90% blessed, you'd rather have 100% cursed, so you refuse to tithe even though the Lord said to tithe. But when you become spiritually sleepy, you start to say things like, I can't afford to tithe. I need all my money. Shame the devil. What is the open window that you are seated in right now? Is it fits of rage and anger um, towards your spouse or towards a loved one? And hey, listen, I get it. Uh, Everybody gets angry. And I'm not even here to call anger a sin. But it is what you do when you sin that becomes a sin. And if we're being honest, there could be someone in this room that is one fit, one anger away from laying your hands on your spouse or your child. What is the open window that you are seated in right now? What area of your life opposes God's word, but it is perfectly in keeping with outside these walls in the world? What area of your life is the world clapping for you for, but the Lord is displeased? You've been trying to stay awake. Far too many of us, y'all, sin is crouching at our door right now. And we have been leaning in the window. But you've been trying to stay awake. You know that time when you're trying to stay awake and your head begins to just kind of, kind of, kind of, but, but, 
but you try to stay alert, but you, you try to stay vigilant. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be in my word. I'm going to be in my word. I'm, I'm, Has anybody been there before? In our biblical story, Eutychus was at a church gathering. I love this. Y'all, he was, he was around like-minded individuals. This was an all-nighter. This was church. But as he was dozing off, his head would lean a little bit to the left or lean a little bit to the right. In other words, when he was dozing off, his head would lean a little bit into the world and sometimes back into the church. Have you ever been lukewarm in your walk with Christ? Have you ever been straddling the window seal with one leg in the world and one leg in the church? Have you ever had one leg in your marriage and the other in the world? You see, the problem is while you are in that open window of sin, straddling the window, you have one leg where you need to be and the other leg is where it shouldn't be. Let me show you guys something here really quick. In our biblical story, there were like-minded believers all around him because he was in this church service. I uh, have to imagine that there was nowhere for Eutychus to sit. Have you ever gotten somewhere and you couldn't find a seat? I have to imagine that there was nowhere else to see because many of the believers also wanted to come hear Paul preach. I have to imagine that there was nowhere for Eutychus to make his room out. So what he did was he looked up and he saw this window and he climbed up in it. Now, for the record, I want to clear something up before we get further into this message. I am in no way saying that Eutychus was guilty of sin, and because of that, he fell and died. No, that's not what this message is about. This is simply a sermon illustration. So let's paint this picture for just a moment. Let's imagine for a moment that the window, remember, is uh, representing open sin in your life. We have no idea why Eutychus chose this window, y'all, but we do know that he went to sleep and he fell. And I want to show you guys some scriptures from the Bible that talk about sleep. Matthew chapter 13, starting at the 24th verse. Stay with me. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed seeds among the wheat and went away. Notice when the enemy came while men slept. Matthew chapter 26, starting at the 36th verse. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I, in other words, Jesus, go over and pray. Going, uh, let's jump down to 39, going a little bit further, he, he fell to his face. This is Jesus. And he prayed out th this prayer, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Right? Verse 40. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men watch for me for one hour, he asked Peter? Watch this, verse 41. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation, for the spirit is willing, but the flesh, ooh, the flesh is weak. Can I keep going? Luke chapter 9, verse 28. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John, and James with him and went up on the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became bright and as a flashing uh, light. And two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor talking to Jesus. Can you imagine? Verse 31. They spoke about his departure, which was about to bring, he was about to bring to his fulfillment uh, in Jerusalem. But listen to this, verse 32. Peter and his companions were very sleepy. Y'all, they were in the presence of the Lord and got sleepy. I want to talk to everyone in here today who is dozing off and is falling asleep spiritually. Let me show you one more scripture. 1 Peter 5, verse 8. Be alert. 
Be alert, City Center Church. Be alert, husbands. Be alert, wives. The Bible says, and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, <laughs> oh, he prowling around. And he's looking for you so that he can devour you. That's the JD translation. Stay with me. Sleepy Christians are individuals who once faithfully served God. At one point in your life, you were faithfully going after God. And there was a season of your life you were expectantly looking for Jesus to do all things. You would say things like, I believe that he is and can do it. And you would say things like, even if he doesn't, I'll still praise him. There were seasons of your life where you leaned on scripture. If someone brought you a situation, you would go to them in scripture, not with your opinion, not with the world's opinion, but you would go to them with the word and truth of God. But things start to happen along the way. You go to a church all-nighter, and you find the seat in the window. And there's a situation that's going on in your life, and you don't know how you're ever going to get out of it. So you stop paying attention to who's preaching you. You stop paying attention to the truth of God, and you look, at, you look out into the world. Because you know what? In the world, grass looks much greener. Do you know how fun it would be to go wild out? We can't do that, Christians. We can't do that, City Center Church. I've heard Pastor Matt or Pastor Jeannie preach for, uh, before. If, if that was your season, if you wanted that, you missed that chance. Oh, that ship has sailed. Whoa. Is, that the, is that the sound? <laughs> Sleepy Christians are individuals who once faithfully served God. You know when you used to respond to planning center on time? You know when you used to show up, when you said you would show up? You know when it used to bring you joy, doing a thankless job, but now all of a sudden you want to thank you for everything you do? What area of our life have we allowed sin or the thoughts of sin, pride, jealousy to seep in? Some have retreated from seeking God. There's people in this, in this world... I want you guys to look at this auditorium. There's 1,800 seats, 1,851 to be exact, if you guys want to know we had to count them one time. 1,800 seats in this auditorium. There are churches all around the world that have similar attendance. And listen, not bashing anybody who doesn't go to church. Hear my heart. But did y'all know that there was once a time that this, this house packed? And so I, I, I think to myself, there are people that have retreated from seeking God. Here's why. They received disappointment by a pastor at a church or from other dear brothers and sisters in Christ. They received hurt from a person, so they left the presence of God. I can't seem to find that in my Bible. I'm still searching, y'all. I'll bring it on my next message if I can find it, okay? But I want to talk to two schools of people here today. I want to talk to anyone in here who you are sleepy and you are on the verge. You've been dozing. And you are on the verge. If you were close to this cliff right here, you are going to fall. And then I want to talk to the other group of people in this room who have fallen because of sleepiness. While you were sleeping, the enemy came in and he planted a seed. While you were sleeping, temptation entered and seduced you. It enticed you, and guess what? It fooled you. Look at the Bible of, uh, look at the story in the Bible of, of Adam and Eve. The devil said just the right words to make that fruit look appealing, and they took it and they ate it. There was really no they in the beginning. I mean, Eve did take it first, but we're not here to talk about that. Amen. <laughs> I know, ladies. Well, where was the husband? I get it. Okay, all right. We're not here to talk about that. But while you were sleeping, you could only see the things of the world. While you were getting sleepy, the things of God became much further 
to reach. While you are sleeping, your minds have been led astray from your sincere and pure dedication to Christ. And I want to close here. Stay with me. You see, I'm not saying, I know I've said this before, and I need y'all to get this. I'm not saying there's anything with sleep. Some of y'all can sleep for hours. I've heard some of my students say they can sleep for like 12 hours. That's amazing. I'm like, I'm lucky if I get six. I'm not here to say that we should avoid sleeping, but I am saying that you should come down from that open window. The Bible tells us in the story of Eutychus that they were all gathered together in the upper room. And it is time to come down from the open window and to come into the room. Eutychus was at a church service, y'all. There was, there was room. I don't know how much square footage there was, but there was enough space. He could have been in there. But he chose the window. In the window is access to sin. But in the room, there's access to life. In the window, you're isolated. You're the only one sitting up there. But in the room, there are like-minded individuals people who want to come together and pray with you and for you, lay hands on you, do life with you, do life alongside you. You see, in the window, you can see everything that you want. Look out. But in the room, God has provided everything you need. Resting in the window is not safe for anybody in this room. Did you know that thieves access windows to break in? (laughs) But the Lord uses the room to break out. In the room, the Holy Spirit can come. But I'm wondering, are you so far perched in the window that you can no longer hear the voice of God? All of the distractions from your window have taken you away from your dedication to your service to the Most High God. And you're wondering, you're wondering why your life is not really all that good right now. We're not going to the Father for anything. We're going to the window to see what everybody else has. I want to see what trip they're taking this spring break and this summer and this Christmas. I want to see what their kids got for Christmas. I want to see what, oh, 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 oh. I want to see what their husband did for their anniversary. All the men just keep looking forward. It's okay. (laughs) But it's time to come down out of the window. Let me share with you a couple more scriptures and we'll close this out. 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3 verse 6. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or knows him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. And the one who does what is sinful is of the devil, (laughs) because the devil has been sinning from the very beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. And no one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in them. They cannot continue to go on sinning because they have been born of uh, of God. This is how we will know who the children of God are and who are the children of the devil are. Let me read this last part. Anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child. Children play in the window. Children climb trees so they can look out. It's a part of childhood. We all did it. But if I ever see an adult in a tree or perched in a window and you are not cleaning said window, there's an issue. If you're in this place here today and you have fallen asleep spiritually 
and experienced a fall. Perhaps it is a fall that cost you, maybe even significantly. Perhaps it was a fall that caused you to die, not, not physically, but spiritually. I came all the way from my office down the hallway to tell you something. There's still life ahead for you. There is more in store. Can I share with you guys my favorite part of this story here today? Acts chapter 20, verse 10. Paul went down. He threw himself on the young man, and he put his arms around him. He said, don't be alarmed. Don't be afraid. He is alive. Did you guys see that scripture? The Bible says that Paul threw himself on the young man to cover him. But guess what? Jesus went to the cross to cover you. Paul put his arms around the young man to embrace him, but Jesus said that his grace is sufficient and his mercies are renewed each and every morning. If you go on and read the rest of Acts chapter 20, the Bible tells us that Eutychus got up, and I'm so thankful that we serve a Jesus who didn't stay dead either. In fact, on the third day, my Jesus, I don't know about your Jesus, but my Jesus got up with all power in his hands, power to break every chain, power to break down every stronghold, power to give you life and life more abundantly. And guess what? Because he got up, you can get up. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking about you. Just like Paul, I'm not ready to close the service yet. Can I give y'all two more? First Corinthians Chapter 6, uh, we'll start at the ninth verse. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, uh-oh, idolaters, adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor the drunkards, nor the swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. Look at your neighbor and say, oh, he's definitely talking about you. Such were some of you. <laughs> Glory to God. But you, you were washed. You were sanctified. Come on. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. So if you're in this place today and you've fallen from your spiritual tiredness, it's time to get up like Eutychus and to go back upstairs. In other words, it's time to get up, make a 180 degree turn back to Christ and repent. And last one, Mark chapter 13 starting at the 32nd verse. But about that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. The Bible says, be on guard. Be alert, City Center Church. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge and each with their own assigned task. And he tells the one at the door, that's you, keep watch. Therefore, verse 35, keep watch, City Center Church, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back. For those of you that don't know this story, we're talking about Jesus here today, whether in the evening or the midnight hour or when the rooster crows at dawn. But verse 36 says this, if he suddenly, if he comes suddenly, don't let him find you Don't let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, what I say to everyone, just keep watch. City Center Church, I'm not telling you not to sleep. We all need sleep. But what I am telling you is 
not to fall asleep spiritually. I'm telling you not to fall asleep on Christ, but to rest in Christ. I didn't even need my towel today, praise the Lord. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Am I talking to you today? Are you spiritually sleepy in this place and you'd be bold enough to say, JD, pray for me. My head's been bobbing. I've been tired. Maybe it's new, maybe it's old, I don't know. But there's some areas of your life where you have been spiritually sleepy. And then I'm talking to another group of people. JD, will you pray for me? I've fallen. We're not here to ask you what it is. But if that's you today, and you're you're saying, JD, will will you pray for me? Will you lift your hand long enough for me to recognize it? Come on, all on the right side in the center. We have a couple in the back, here on the left. Anyone else? It's me, JD. Pray for me. I've, I've fallen asleep. I've been sleepy or I've fallen. You can put your hands down. And before I leave, I would be remiss if I didn't ask the most important question that we could have asked here today. If you don't take anything from this word, maybe this moment will change your life. Is there anybody in here today? You've never given your life to Jesus. And you want to make sure before you walk outside these doors here today that your eternity is secure in Christ. And you want to make the Lord Jesus your Savior. Or maybe it's been a long time. And you want to rededicate your life to the Lord. Can I ask you to raise your hand if that's you? Lift your hand today. I want to give my life to the Lord today. I want to rededicate my life to the Lord. We have some hands here in the center, here on the left side. Come on, make some noise for these beautiful people up in the balcony. Come on. You can put your hands down. Will you pray this prayer with me? Say, dear Jesus, I love you. Be the Lord of my life. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you are King of kings, that you are Lord of lords, (laughs) and that you died for me. Fill me with your spirit today and give me wisdom for the days ahead. Come on, can you guys make some noise for Jesus in this place? Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Make some noise for Jesus!